Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Alex, this is Emma, and we are full time travelers and digital nomads, and this is our new weekly segment, Refried Beans. So, in this segment, we will be digging up some old footage and just generally having a chat about travel. Last time we talked about our top five animal experiences, and this time we're going to be talking about our worst. So let's kick it off with number five, the snow monkeys in Japan. It comes in at number five because it wasn't an absolutely horrific experience or anything. It just was highly disappointing, I would say. Emma, is this as good as you imagined? Yeah. We first heard of these delicious monkeys on David Attenborough, and after seeing them, they became kind of a bucket list thing to do. There's a certain time of year where you're almost guaranteed to see them at Giogadani National Park, which is about five hours from Tokyo. These monkeys are a specific breed of Japanese macaques that like to bathe in the hot volcanic spring water in the mountains, which is what makes them so famous. When we first got to the park, we saw a huge bus full of tourists. I won't say what country they were from. <laughs> and we had to leg it to try and get there before they all got to the monkeys. But there was already some waiting for us. There were. When we got there, it didn't matter if you were there first or last, all hell was breaking loose. There were cameras everywhere, selfie sticks, everything you could imagine. One of the reasons why it's guaranteed is that they do feed the animals there, which we weren't aware of before. As good as it was to see these monkeys up close, it just wasn't that memorable on reflection. And it definitely wasn't unique. I feel like everyone who goes there gets the same photos of the same situation because they feed them and bring them there. As we said, it's almost guaranteed. Despite all this, it still was a really great day, and these monkeys are kind of unlucky to be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, the elephants in Thailand. Before Emma and I met, we were both in Chiang Mai, and we unfortunately did the same experience that I really wish that we didn't do. I know, I'm almost ashamed to say that I did this, but at the time I was young, naive, and definitely had not done my research. That's right, I went on an elephant ride. It's kind of well known now that this is a bad thing to do and is very well publicized, especially on social media, but at the time I had no idea what I was letting myself in for. So back in 2012 when we did this, Lonely Planet was basically the main way that people <laughs> would travel. People weren't really using blogs and they definitely weren't using YouTube at the time, so this information wasn't circulating in the same way it does now. So my experience of the elephant riding was just bad to begin with, to be honest. We got on the elephant's backs, me and a group of other people who I'd met along the way, and I automatically felt horrendously uncomfortable on the back of this elephant on this harnessed on seat with uh, one of the, I guess, trainers or owners that were sat on the elephant's neck at the time. And as we walked, it just got worse and worse because the trainer got out this tool and it was like a hammer on one end and a pick on the other and any time the elephant wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing um it got a whack on the head with the hammer and any time it wanted it to turn or move it would use the pick and pull its ear up side to side and you could see the elephant had scars all around its ears and you could hear the thud as the hammer hit the elephant's head. It was heartbreaking. I was in tears the whole journey. I was begging the guy to stop and he was just laughing about it. It was really the most horrific experience. Unfortunately, my experience was extremely similar to this, but when we went back to Chiang Mai a number of years later, we got to redo it in a much better way. Alex and I visited the Elephant Nature Park near Chiang Mai, where they do incredible things with elephants and a number of other animals as well. They rescue elephants from these kind of elephant riding places, from logging, all kinds of exploitation that they undergo. They give them medical treatment and a nice place to live. So if you guys want to go and experience anything with elephants or animals in Thailand, please do your research. Don't do what we did. If you go back and watch that video, you might actually notice that I decided not to be on camera that day. Now I had really mixed feelings while being there, and I did actually film something that I decided not to put in at the time. So I've decided today that I don't really want to be on the video. Um, because I'm kind of having a moral dilemma since I've been here. If it's bad that the elephants have suffered, um, especially in the name for tourism or anything like that, uh, 
I'm basically not feeling any empathy towards any of the animals here. If I start to feel bad for these elephants, then I should feel bad for every animal. And if I feel bad for every animal, then I should be vegetarian or vegan because any suffering is really bad. And uh, as much as I love elephants or any other beautiful animal, there is no reason why one animal should be logically better than any other animal. So these elephants logically shouldn't have more value than say a cow or something like that because it just doesn't make any sense logically. So I kind of feel like people are being hypocrites if they are saying I feel so so sorry for these elephants, it's horrible what's happened to them and then they go home and then they have a burger or something like that because they're still contributing to an industry that is taking advantage of animals and causing suffering. <sighs> I'm really torn today, I'm really torn. I feel like if I really listen to myself that it's going to tell me that I should be vegetarian or something. And maybe interestingly after this, I became vegan for about two weeks. <laughs> you did. This sausage loving boy <laughs> wasn't even drinking milk. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen anything quite like it. But he easily pushed those feelings aside after a couple weeks, didn't he? And then I just moved on and decided that basically no animal's lives are worth it, so I'll eat all the meat that I want. <laughs> Number three, the given in Kuala Lumpur. We never usually go to zoos anymore, but we were given free tickets with the hotel that we were staying at. But we were quickly reminded about why we don't go to zoos anymore. We always like the idea, but we always end up leaving with a horrible, guilty, hollow feeling. There really is something quite depressing about seeing uh, these animals pacing up and down by the windows. It just looks so small, and even if it's for restoration, I don't know, I just want to go see them in the wild. But it's so obviously much harder to see. I love seeing animals so much. I really do love seeing them. The experience seemed to affect me especially um, because of a specific encounter we had with a gibbon inside the zoo. So we were walking around having a look at all the animals in their sad little enclosures. <laughs> <laughs> then we came across the gibbon enclosure, which was fairly spacious to be fair for a zoo enclosure. It sat there for a couple of minutes sort of checking us out and watching us and then it went around to the side. <gasps> em. Em, are you supposed to be doing that? Oh my god. This moment absolutely broke my heart and actually when we watched the clip yesterday before making this video She burst into tears I all burst over into again. tears again. It was such an emotional experience. I just felt so helpless because I felt that this poor animal why was it doing that unless it felt so lonely and starved of any kind of interaction? I was heartbroken because there was nothing I could do about it. And I don't think we will ever go to a zoo again after that experience. To us, it just doesn't really feel worth it. Number two, the whale sharks in Oslo. The first time we went to the Philippines, we filmed ourselves going to see whale sharks in Oslo and we never released the video and today we're going to explain why. This was at the top of my bucket list on this trip was to go and see whale sharks. Emma's number one thing to see was manta rays which we went to go and see in the Maldives. So going here to see the whale sharks which is the only place in the world where you're guaranteed to see them was really exciting for me. but. Being guaranteed to see them should have been ringing alarm bells at the time. So when you get there and you buy your ticket, you have to have like an orientation before you get into the water. They talk to you about the safety issues of going out on the boat and they also tell you about how you should behave around the whale sharks, how important it is to keep a good one to two meter distance from them, not to touch them, not to get too close, to watch your flippers on your feet, make sure you're not hitting them. We really had high hopes for it because they really emphasize 
emphasized how important it was to do all of this. But once you get into the water, it was an absolute war zone out there. People were kicking the whale shark, they were trying to get selfies and they weren't aware of their fins smacking into them. Even the boatmen were getting out of the water to help the tourists take photos and just watching them smack into them without telling them that it was unacceptable. The fact that the employees on the boats were even taking part and not telling people that they should be backing off and getting away from the whale sharks was such a horrible realization that we had made a huge mistake. We've never looked at the footage that we filmed at the time and we decided that we weren't going to make a video about it because we just didn't want to promote it. Here is some unseen footage of an interview I did with the tour guide kind of to show my feelings of it at the time. So do you think that it is bad or good to have to feed them so the tourists can swim with them? Yeah, actually, yeah, it's good to feed them because they're such like human, they feel hungry too. And you want to touch them? Yeah, you can touch them. And then if you want to feed them, yeah, you can feed them. No harm about it. And I think there's no violation if you're going to feed the animal for that way. So it's not only the way people behave whilst they're in the water with the whale sharks, it's also the disruption to the migration because they're getting fed food consistently at this place in Oslob, there's no reason for them to move around and migrate like they would do naturally. Also where the whale sharks are coming up to the feeder boats to get some food, they're actually rubbing up against the side of the boats and this is causing sores around their mouths which was just really heartbreaking to see. So something that should have been on last week's video at the number one unfortunately has ended up on the worst animal experience list of the travel beans and you don't want to be there! No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> number one, and this is something that's worldwide, it's humans. This might sound cheesy and cliche as hell, <laughs> but no matter what you think, we are animals. Technically speaking. And all of the worst experiences we've had with wildlife is actually down to humans. We've also seen so much destruction that humans can do around the world. The amount of plastic waste that you see around is horrendous. I actually, yeah, every place we go to, no matter how remote, no matter how far away from civilization you are, you will always find plastic. A lot of these plastic bags get washed into the ocean and like turtles, everyone loves a good sea turtle. They mistake them for jellyfish, which they eat, and then they die because they've got plastic in their bodies. If everyone who comes here just picks up just a handful of rubbish every time they go to the beach, it makes such a big difference. This is something that we're quite passionate about and we do talk about in other videos. And if we actually thought we had that much influence, we would talk about it a hell of a lot more because there is not one video where we don't see so much waste on the ground. There is nothing quite like walking through a magical enchanted forest and then having the illusion destroyed person that has taken their baby's nappy and thrown it into this magical wonderful place and ruined my day. I'm furious. <laughs> furious. If that's any of you guys at home, unsubscribe or I'm banning you if there was a way of finding out. The common denominator when you look at this list of bad experiences always comes down to human intervention trying to force these animal experiences on us and we're suckers for it every one of us buys into it and actually it's completely unnatural there's a reason why it doesn't happen naturally we are far better off going and seeing them in their natural environment and we always have some such good experiences with wild animals as opposed to forced ones. That said, it's very easy for us to say that you should have unique animal experiences in the wild when we can travel full time. Not everyone can do that, so I completely understand the other side of the argument that, for example, zoos are for education, but there's something so empty about these experiences. Hmm. We're not going to get into a discussion now about what zoos are like and whether or not they're ethical and what they should be replaced with. You guys are free to have that discussion in the comments if you like. However, maybe we all just need to be a little more conscious of ourselves and make sure we try and minimize waste and pollution as much as possible, especially when out in nature. I think most of you guys watching, this is just preaching to the choir. <laughs> and that is another reason why we don't actually talk about it that much, because I genuinely don't think we are going to be changing anyone's minds here. None of these animals are polluting their homes and their environments like we are. And I just hope that there is a nice, beautiful world for our children, your children, their generation, 
positions to be able to see. Positivity! I like it! Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and leave us a comment below. Let us know your awful experiences, your amazing experiences and just your general thoughts and opinions on it all. I'm actually feeling quite down after talking about this video so depressing. I'm not going to give you that much energy for the end of this. <laughs> but. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. There's a patron if you've got too much money to spare. <laughs> We've also got a Facebook group. Search for Earn Less Live More Travel Beans and you will find it. And finally, thank you very much for watching. See you next time and beans out.